So I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about well myself, being the care bearer that I am, and how I got here, or where I am today. Uh, this is a quote from a few years back that kind of <coughs> has uh, worked with me through life. Uh, so it's kind of fitting to make that into that quote for uh, New Eden. Since we all start with a fresh clone, some people start with a whole lot more clones than others. But. So this is my story, and if you have like questions or comments throughout the session, feel free to yell. <laughs> so who am I? Uh, I've played since 2003, just short after launch. So that's 10 years uh, wasted. <laughs> uh, came in after playing Elite or the Elite games. Uh, a, few, a few more fans. I like it. Good. Uh, it was my, the first MMO and the only MMO I pretty much played. I tried WoW once. Don't kill me for it. Uh, but Eve has always been most dear to me. Uh, ex except for Eve, uh, I do play a little bit console games and recently Dust. Uh, in real life, uh, not many people know what uh, or who I am in real life, and it has been a, a reason for that. So everything has just been like, oh, this, this mysterious guy. And I pretty much didn't show up at like conventions or anything like that for a long time. I was, so uh, it was just this this name. Everyone, or not everyone, but a lot of people knew, but no one really knew what was behind it. Uh, First computer when I was very young, so this is in the 80s. Uh, how I got hooked on it, uh, or well, I got hooked on it then. Uh, and, well, it took like a month and then I had my first crashed computer. Uh, obviously since uh, being a Swede, I wasn't uh, fluent in English uh, at that young age. Pretty much didn't know anything, so like delete command. Well, that's something I could just try from this like help sheet that I had. Uh, I think I took uh, the computer with me to school a little bit too much because I didn't do well at all. Uh, like high school and stuff like that, I kind of failed. But uh, it, it's prob probably for a reason because I don't think I would be where I am today if I like, hadn't failed all those things. Uh, but I went on and, uh, to work and I've been working for computer-related law enforcement for nearly a decade, or well, cybercrime you might call it. I've uh, been working with a few organizations here and there, which has the reason why I'm maybe haven't been so public with everything. Uh, and th that's the, the span of the things that I've been doing. So, mm. <laughs> well, obviously the anti pirate <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know, like, fi fighting child pornography. Oh. Ooh. Uh, right now, I'm on the sysadmin team of an online casino, and it's not Summer Blink. This is a real casino. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't want. Uh, my first steps uh, starting creating the character, obviously, like everyone, except uh, ha not having played or anything like that before. I just like, what the fuck is this? This like Sims creating a character. I have no idea. I just like create stuff. And I found the Minmatar logo. I was like, oh, this looks like a nice logo. That must be fucking superior rates, which it is, of course. <laughs> uh, but randomization, that is the key. Just click the shit and go to the next step. So <laughs> it took like 10 seconds to create my character. Uh, attributes, I had no idea what that was, and I wasn't really interested in like reading about it. So I just clicked randomly and pulled the, uh, the bars and stuff like that and ended up maxing out charisma, because that's the best thing to have, right? <laughs> Especially for the first five years or so. Uh, the reason um, my name is Kriva was actually, I was going by another nickname at that time, but CCP didn't allow three characters in the name. So I was like, oh, I can't use my regular name. So I took my second one, which was, well, my real nickname. Uh, so I was born in June, shortly a month after launch then. And uh, started to, Play. First thing happened, uh, not like you have the tutorial and shit like that today. 
had got my Reaper and was thrown into a belt and immediately the red box had started to flash. Those damn pesky pirates I had no idea what to do because there was no tutorial. It was like trial and error, try this thing. Which was uh, kind of nice, but it scares the living crap out of me. And that's probably why I don't PvP today. <laughs> I, I spent a few weeks to uh, mine to get my uh, skill book and stuff like that because I, I happened to roam by a, a guy mining in a Vexor. I was like, wow, that looks like an amazing ship. I gotta have that. Uh, so I started to mine for the skill book, got the skill book, uh, thought there has to be a quick way to earn money in this game, so I started to look at trading. And at the time, I found a very good deal of probes being sold. Uh, bought uh, 10 of them because uh, a few jumps away, you could sell them for a 50k profit. And this is total of the 10. Uh, except what I didn't realize at that time was that jumping 10 ships, 10 jumps, and then having to go back to fetch to the next one, it's going to take a few days to earn those 50k that I so sought after. So uh, I sold the ships back in the same station for loss, of course. So I'm like, back to square one. Uh, but I, I, I continue, continued on mining instead. And I got my lovely Wexer there after probably like a month's worth of playing. Uh, decided that I should try this. It is a multiplayer game after all, so let's do that. And I found a Swedish corp called Sverike that uh, took me in and uh, taught me the, the games of playing in a corporation. Uh, and that was like my search for finding my place, which at the time felt very nice. Uh, went on some exploring uh, in Nolsek, which was very calm at that time. It was like no bubble camps and stuff like that. Uh, found myself going into one of the few Nolsec stations uh, in my, at that time, very shiny Armageddon, fitted with a uh, Viker Warp Drive. And then CCP decided to make changes to the Viker Warp Drives. So I ended up with uh, uh, an Armageddon that could boost its speed from like 118 to 120. <laughs> Uh, that was a lovely time, uh, but I did manage, manage to get out of uh, Nolsec alive, but uh, not without uh, a near heart attack. Uh, it took uh, about a year, and then I decided that it, the corp didn't really do much for me. Everything I did uh, within the corp, I still did the things that uh, only benefited myself. So I decided I'm going to play solo, so I'm going to leave the corp and uh, start doing my own thing. Uh, founded my corp, then I'm still uh, in today, nine years later, all and by myself, uh, earned my first war deck from a market transaction uh, that didn't go so well. Or well, it went. I thought it went well because I uh, accidentally bought overpriced overdrives for a few millions instead of the hundred thousand that they did cost. Uh, trying to regain the loss there, I put them back up in the market for those millions again, and some other guy bought them and he got pissed. <laughs> so, so then uh, I got a war deck from them because obviously this mistake that cost him 10 million, eh, I'm going to pay for it. Uh, turns out that during the month that the war deck lasted, I, I saw the guy once as I was jumping through a gate. So I escaped that uh, alive. Uh, searching for the home, I found a system called Lower Devil, where I remained for two, three years, perhaps. Uh, the fun thing about that, also, the, me not reading stuff. Uh, I spend a lot of time mining, and the system has two stations. And I refine everything in one station, uh, only to find out, like, yeah, two years later, that this station has a 50% refining tax compared to the other one that has, like, 25. <laughs> but I also found a way to explore safe spots in that system, which was uh, a very unique and uh, cool thing to do. Uh, and I figured out well, we can, it's hard to see, but uh, a pod can warp about 3,000 AU on its cap. And this was the time when you could bookmark systems, so they like, well, had an unlimited range. I was like, I'm going to try this in a, in a capsule, because obviously they can warp really far. Uh, and the, it started to warp. After 10 minutes, I got a little bit worried that it was still in warp. <laughs> uh, so I, I decided to log out, and like, yeah, I waited five minutes, because obviously then you disconnected and put somewhere else in space, logged on, the capsule was still warp. 
Uh, so it took about 20 minutes, and then finally it stopped. And I was like, yay! So a, a, a pod can warp for 20 minutes and 3,000 AU. That's a pretty good, deep, safe spot. <laughs> <laughs> Except, obviously, the only way to get there would be with a pod <laughs> in, tw in 20 minutes. Uh, so I had a lovely time, but at least knew, I knew when I warped back that I would actually land in a system like 20, 20 minutes later, so I could go make food and stuff like that for the time. Uh, and the, in 2000, or late 2004, the first alliances are created, or the, the mechanics for alliances are introduced. Uh, me seeing that, uh, and I've always been like, I want to be able to do what everyone do, uh, regardless of what it is, because obviously they say, like, alliances, it's only for like all, all the corporations and the members coming together in one big thing. I was like, I want to have my own alliance too, all by myself. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, I spent the, the weeks needed to train the skills, obviously, and grind the ISK to uh, create that alliance, and I managed to do so. And this uh, later also, uh, the dreadnoughts are introduced, and I decided, like, I want that too, because obviously this is a huge alliance tool that uh, I need to extend my something else small. <laughs> so I had uh, the dreadnought built in Amar, since you were able to do that at the time. Uh, and um, that kind of made Amar my headquarters because I had no intention of actually using this ship in combat or dumping it out. So it still remains there today, uh, some long time later. After this, I'm starting to uh, really get into community services because I had uh, had friends that have made videos, and a lot of you probably remember like old time videos from. Merge and the mission and stuff like that. Uh, and there was really no place to host these because YouTube wasn't a thing back then. Uh, so stuff got scattered all over the place, everything from screenshots to videos, stuff like that. And being interested in computer and having the ability to put up servers, stuff like that, I decided to write a small page where people could just simply upload stuff. Uh, so it started out with, like, I'm making this virtual server, putting in a small 20 gigabyte hard drive into it because obviously that's going to asked me for years because no one will put up high def movies or anything like that. But it took like a month and then it was, it was filled and gone, I had to upgrade. Uh, and also the forums were pretty sucky, uh, especially the search function. Uh, one CCP employee actually from this post back in 2003 says that the search is fixed. Uh, and this site was launched uh, two years after that post and still no search function working. As I recall, the, uh, the first time we actually got a working search function was with the new forms that we have now that were introduced in 2011. So, uh, Eve Search was uh, a tool to assist that at the time. And also with uh, toying around with the client, since obviously the client at the time showed the uh, online players, I figured this is something that would be cool to graph because I. I I'm a sucker for graphs and especially like stats that you showed. They're, they're in a, well, as a player, they might be meaningless, but for me, I'm like, I just love to see it and know about it regardless. So I created uh, a site to track the online numbers, which also uh, nowadays track the dust for those that are interested. And uh, I've seen it being uh, very helpful at times, uh, especially June this year when CCP took down their entire network for the security related issues that they had. And my graphs kind of like went up a hundred times, which was quite nice to see because that actually means that you guys uh, use uh, something that I created. Uh, also created eBoard to uh, keep up with the API and also to like gather statistics and stuff like that. And of course, so I can see all your secrets that you share with the API. <laughs> Mainly just to target the people that has large wallets, of course. But it, uh, it keeps track of a lot of pilots. And recently I decided on uh, venturing on a project uh, that using the, well, all the public information that is possible to get from the API without you having to give me the keys uh, to add more characters. So now I have a tool that it, uh, tracks newly created pilots uh, within minutes after their creation 
and all the old pilots as well, uh, and all cooperation alliances, all for my uh, love for the graphs and that stuff. Back in 2005, or late 2005, there was something called the Caldari Alliance Championship, which was uh, what we would call the Alliance Tournament today. Uh, also one of those things that I felt everyone else can, or all the big alliances can, uh, I wanna join too. Lucky for me, there was no rules back then, so anyone could join. You don't have to like field an entire fleet. Uh, I decided to field my, well, myself, only me, versus everyone else, because obviously I'm gonna take home and win this. Uh, coming out with a, a fully tanked uh, apocalypse, uh, with uh, some nice things in uh, the cargo for the winners, because, or, uh, <coughs> for the op opposite opponents, because I don't, didn't really expect that I was gonna uh, last long. But NISD uh, made that quote to me and uh, said that I actually did last uh, longer than some of the other teams that fielded full teams, <laughs> which was like, uh, it felt like a pretty good uh, thing to me. With, uh, with this uh, tournament, which is also really uh, the one that you would call the first alliance tournament, I was at the time toying around with something uh, well, called Eve Live, uh, streaming thing back then, so it's what Twitch is today, but since uh, back then Twitch wasn't a thing either. So basically we uh, were a bunch of guys that were just toying around really before the Alliance tournament, streaming us flying around in space because everyone wants to watch that. Uh, but CCP had taken notice of that and actually invited us to stream the finals, uh, which was like a great opportunity for for us to try out things, really, uh, and to be up close and seeing. And, and I would say today what, you know, what laid the groundwork for the screening that the Lions tournament does today. Uh, and it was us three guys, uh, Loxy Ryder and Tiki Rara and myself. And Loxy you might know of right now because he's the one making all the trailers and stuff like that, since he went on after this uh, to work for CSP. We got to see the first ever uh, mothership back then, uh, which was a really unique experience, being up close in, in a small ship. So props to uh, MC, I think it was, that took home that one. After this, uh, the, the road to uh, my brokering or third party service really started to take off because my, names, uh, my name started to get out for my service of websites and stuff like that. Uh, and it all, all that kind of started with uh, friends of mine that wanted to uh, purchase supercarriers. But back then there was no trust either, so uh, my friends talked to me and asked me like if the seller agrees to, to you holding this while we do this trade, like could you help out? I was like, sure thing, I have no idea what I'm doing, but yeah, I can just hold on to it. <laughs> so the the seller kind of they accepted, uh, and that's sort of how it started. And that was never my intention to be where I am today. I mean, when helping out with those kinds of things, I kind of just stumbled onto it, and I didn't really have any like temptation to steal stuff back then either. So it kind of took off, uh, and I decided like uh, perhaps it's, more people can make use of this, not just my private friends, so I posted a, a thread uh, in 2007 uh, saying like, I can do this for you if you need me to. And it seems that people did need it, which was kind of cool. Uh, to date, I've handled uh, more than 85 trillion ISK, all that has passed through me, not uh, at a single transaction, uh, but it's more than 5,000 tra trades, five million. It's the smallest trade that I've done. <laughs> I, I kind of felt like, ah, what do I even charge this guy? Because usually I, I charge a few millions at least for the things that I do. I, I wouldn't want to put like a 10 million fee on a 5 million trade, especially because this guy was really new and 5 mini, million, that was a ton of money for him. And he was, he was like more nervous than a Titan buyer. <laughs> 
that, 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 that's, uh, that's one of the cool things about uh, players because everyone is unique and different. So for him, that was like his life savings. He probably would have rage quit if he lost that one. Uh, the biggest one uh, is around two trillion in total. Not many scan attempts. Some people try, they fail. <laughs> Traps, are, they're there, also trying. Things do go wrong though, as they always do. Guiding Hand Social Club, they, uh, they've done some pretty cool stuff in, uh, over the years, and they've done one of the traps uh, for me as well, which ended up kind of bad. Oh, bad for the buyer at least, because he got ransomed in the PL also. They're great guys. They, they, they love doing, uh, trying traps, and uh, they uh, sometimes manage to do stuff, sometimes they don't. Uh, in this particular case, they actually managed to kill the guy that bought it after he made uh, some pretty unwise moves, I would say. It might be idea to not log off if you are in a system and there's 50 red ones in there. <laughs> might be better to just sign out. The guy afterwards uh, felt that this was something that I, that I did on purpose, which was kind of amusing. But it taught me to also, like, Perhaps I should be giving some guidance to new SuperCap pilots, giving them some pointers. Like maybe you would like to do this or that, just to help them on the way and keeping them a little bit more safe. Uh, as new uh, ships come out of production, sometimes they don't, it doesn't work as it should. In this particular case, uh, back in the days, the collision boxes of SuperCaps and POS modules were in love with each other, I think, because uh, this particular Titan got out of production uh, or launched from the array and felt that it was inside the collision box of the tower and just ejected out. <laughs> and so we have three guys in Nullsec chasing down a pilotless Titan. <laughs> I, I secretly was laughing my ass off <laughs> because there's like nothing more funny than seeing a, a Titan just away in space. <laughs> Nerve wrecking, but we managed to chase it down eventually and obviously back then with no modules and things like that. And I think the buyer was just a, a sitting alt without skills. So like agility and stuff like that, it wasn't the best. So it took a few minutes because before it even slowed down, so you could like turn around and warp somewhere. Uh, I had one guy that came to the trade and the seller get out, and he was gonna jump in, but he didn't do it, and he was wondering like, what's going on? Why aren't you jumping in? And it's like, I'm sorry guys, but I forgot to train the skill. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, for me, I would say like, yeah, isn't that the basics to just make sure that you actually can fly the stuff? I mean, I, I even today, I, have, I can fly all the ships in game, but sometimes I still just right click a, a Titan or something like that, just making sure that I haven't like, somehow lost the skill somewhere. Uh, but for him, it just took like uh, two and a half hours, then he had the skill train and could, he could actually get his new, new ship. Uh, another guy was very nervous, his first uh, purchase, and he clicks the ship and, and get out, uh, get out, get out of his own ship and uh, is ready to board and he jumps back into his own ship again. Like, That's the wrong, wrong ship. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm, re I'm, re I'm really nervous. My hand is shaking here. Like, okay, that's, that's okay. Just do it again. Like, do it calmly. And he jumps out again and jumps into his own ship again. It's like, okay, just take a few deep breaths and then... <laughs> It, it went well, but it, yeah, that's uh, probably one of the most nervous uh, pilots I've ever encountered. Uh, another guy. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that one kind of explains itself, right? <laughs> also someone that maybe hasn't read up on what the ships actually do. Uh, he took off and I just had to ask because I, I, sometimes I get this feeling that something isn't right. 
uh, as I see him just warp off towards a gate. It's like, <laughs> where did you warp? Like, do you have a do you have a safe spot? He was he's like, no, I'm warping on gate. Like, yeah, but why? He's like, yeah, I, I'm gonna get out of here. It's like you do know that those ships doesn't use gates, right? No, I don't. <laughs> then I don't want it. It was uh, pretty amusing. Uh, so he, he didn't get to return the ship, though. But uh, I did uh, order for him to uh, find a new buyer for his awesome ship. He probably wanted to take it to Gita or show off or something like that. But. <laughs> Next to this, uh, I, with the API uh, being launched, uh, I started to heavily in integrate that in everything that I do uh, as, much, as much as possible, uh, which usually should be a good thing, uh, except you can't always predict the amount of traffic a uh, site will get, especially not when uh, all you guys find something that you like and like, oh, I'm gonna start using this as much as we can. So throughout all my sites, 20% uh, uh, or well, 20% of all the errors that CCP gets on the API comes from me. <laughs> I would love to think that all these errors are uh, obviously not bad code from my point of view, but it, it is probably a few lines of bad code uh, causing unnecessary errors. But I make on average uh, 12 re requests per second throughout the entire day, so uh, at peak times that would probably climb up to be like 100 and 150 which is uh, quite a lot at times, except you get banned after eight, eight errors per minute. So during peak, it would take me like a half a second to get banned if something was wrong. Uh, but on average, it just takes seven. So I mean, I got plenty of time to actually try to prevent stuff. Uh, but I, I decided to introduce a, a proxy for it uh, that all my requests are running through to try and just uh, get, uh, handle it uh, more properly. So it, it auto shuts down or puts in a delay and stuff like that. Uh, plus, CCP didn't always know who caused these errors uh, at first before I actually told them like, yeah, if you see errors coming from like this IP, it's me. Uh, but I started to like, try to help out as much as I can by putting in extra headers in my requests and changing my reverse IP to things that actually pointed them in the direction towards me. So if things do go wrong, they can actually like talk to me directly instead of just banning me because, yeah, it sucks to be banned. And especially it sucks to, uh, to be banned when you are not at home, which uh, for some reason seemed to happen as, uh, as soon as I go someplace, then shit goes bad and everything <laughs> just down. Uh, hopefully that takes care of a little bit of it anyway. For the future, uh, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm trying to keep up with traffic and making sure that I have the infrastructure needed to provide everything that I have. Uh, also very interesting, looking forward to all the Crest implementation that are coming. Have some projects for Androids uh, that I hopefully will be able to launch and you guys can make use of. Uh, and I got something called EBL that was designed, uh, or is designed, to combat spam, but I'm not sure it actually is that needed anymore since CCP seems to have taken up on uh, spam in JIDA, which is uh, very nice to see. Hopefully, uh, CCP will make that project very redundant. Uh, but being known, uh, it has its benefits, of course. I, uh, a number of times, flew past uh, gate camps, which is always a nice thing to see because uh, the worst thing uh, I can imagine sort of uh, a few of those things is warping to a gate and suddenly it's just red on my overview. Along with all like all the asteroid fields and planets and stuff like that that I have because obviously I don't know how to set up the overview. <laughs> uh, but uh, a lot of them actually do let me pass, which is um, I'm very grateful for, uh, for you guys to do that to me. I get extra beer. It's always a good thing, but also uh, maybe not always that good. <laughs> You'll see, it, it depends on uh, how much free beer I get. Uh, but local chat, uh, both in-game and out-of-game, 
is something that is uh, amazing. Just uh, the simple hello and like, oh, I, I saw your name somewhere. It, it's something that I always uh, appreciated and makes me really happy to just get the hellos. A lot of people uh, help out in cases where something happens or when I'm throwing uh, events, things like that. And that's also something that I feel is very unique to our EVE community. There's like a ton of, uh, a ton of love. So. Du during all this uh, uh, being known and everything, uh, a goal was and always has been like, I'm gonna have Solve and Outposts at some day. Uh, first time I had Solve, uh, I was actually waiting for a super cap trade in an old sex system called M3. And sitting there cloaked, not having another like eight, nine hours of waiting until the trade because I like to be prepared. Uh, I used the, the D scan and I found an, an unanchored TCU. I was like, oh cool, and it's within range, sort of. Uh, so I spent like eight hours of micro warp driving towards that thing with my awesome D scan skills. Uh, eventually, I actually reached it. Uh, problem is you can't scoop that in a, a tiny frigate. Uh, and it belonged to someone else. But I got one of the locals to actually borrow me an industrial uh, so I could launch that thing. And I, I claimed some. Woohoo! <laughs> For a short while. <laughs> because then PL came. <laughs> uh, and it, it, it went quick. But hey, I had like solve for three days. That's an really awesome feat. Later, uh, I, I got uh, the offer to run the outpost in 9YU, 9UY, uh, after the previous people there was evicted. And I was like, if you take this, can you keep, make sure you keep it open for everyone? Which is something that I'm like, oh, of course I would. Uh, I would love to have an out outpost at some point. Uh, and I held it for over a year, or held it, I had it, I would say. Uh, during uh, a few times, some of you might have been uh, in uh, a battle, I would call it, that I, uh, that I called like the Battle of the Holy Bellspark Cottage, uh, which was essentially a small uh, pirate gang of 10 people that decided we're gonna take this outpost from you. Uh, which, like, this was uh, probably like 10, 11 months after, or I had it for 10, 11 months. So it's way, way longer than I expected because I expected to lose this outpost within a week. Uh, and I, going back to that uh, thing of the benefits of having a known name, I, did, I posted a thread on the forums pretty much saying that, look at this cool pirate gang, they're gonna steal my outpost, so people that have stuff in there should probably take their stuff right now before you can't dock anymore. And that post resulted in a huge fleet battle with uh, several hundred people showing up to defend <laughs> me. I never laid a single shot myself, but uh, the outpost survived. Uh, everyone else survived until uh, Northern Coalition hot dropped everyone. <laughs> uh, which was, uh, well, it was fun because uh, people, well, people showed up and it wasn't really any planned event. People formed fleets of their own roaming around. Eve University came and like, did a Nolsec roam showing the new name, uh, new pilots of like, how a Nolsec battle could be, things like that. And, well, until NC came and started to shoot down the SBUs and like, oh, they saved the day, and then just went for everyone else still there. <laughs> uh, after that, I was given uh, head GP uh, during the uh, AAA campaign wars thing, uh, which was uh, fun to, uh, to be able to sit in, in that specific location, actually, since it, it is a quite frequently visited system. Uh, that ended with, uh, I think it was PL that also came in uh, during the end and robbed me. <laughs> Maybe those guys have a thing for me, I don't know. Uh, but there is uh, 
some downsides perhaps to having a known name, not all benefits all the time. Uh, I did fly a, a Falcon through Nullsec at the time, landed in a bubble, and everyone went, oh my god, it's Kribba, get him! <laughs> uh, I made it out in my pod, thankfully. But uh, I realized that uh, it's not, not everyone's gonna let me pass by because a lot of people want that kill mail as well, just to have says Kriba there. It's just uh, kind of funny. And this uh, uh, incident is uh, uh, well, a proof that flying drunk isn't always the best way to fly. Uh, I was flying through high sec actually and in my tech three, thinking that I'm invincible. I see a, a can floating around and I open it up and it's a plastic wrap in there. I'm like, well, drunk as I am, I was like, a plastic wrap, that is awesome, I gotta have that. <laughs> so obviously, and there's no ships around or anything, so I'm looting that thing. And I get flagged. And two seconds after, I have like a bunch of people decloaking just next to me. <laughs> uh, well, Obviously, I have like super, no, I had mad quick reaction skills. So I totally get away from that, right? Like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> End up uh, get, getting killed and losing uh, the plastic wrap. <laughs> <laughs> However, the, the biggest question uh, the, the pirate gang had at that time was, why, why are you flying around with a corpse in your cargo? But they, they tried to get me, because the last I know is my, my corpse is worth 1.2 billion. <laughs> I should have bought it myself to keep the, the, the demand low. But. <laughs> but seriously, thank you. Because uh, if it wasn't for you guys, I would not have had the experience that I've had so far. Uh, and I couldn't... I couldn't have done what I, what I have done without the support of all of you. So it, it's, uh, it's thanks to you that I'm actually around and enjoy this game. So if you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask or grab me later or everything. Okay, can we maybe you have you? Okay, big round. Thank you, Kriba. Okay, now what we're going to do, because we've gone over time, but what we will be doing is taking questions. Sorry, stop walking in front of the speakers. Um, taking questions of Cribber, and then we'll cut to lunch, and so we'll reschedule. So we've got a, got a 10 minutes of uh, questions of Cribber, and then we'll go to lunch. So hands up. Okay, here on the front. Bam's the second microphone. Hands up, and we'll see if we can get a few questions in of Cribber. Come on, 10 minutes. I thought I, everything was crystal clear. Hey, Griver, it's uh, Ark. Uh, just a quick question. You said there were a couple of scams that uh, almost got through. What are some of the funniest ones that you've seen? Well, uh, yeah, funniest one. Uh, they are, are pretty straightforward, I would say. Uh, it, it's, it's usually trying to get steal and get away with a super cap somehow. One has actually managed to do so, or he, uh, he had his, uh, his alt ready outside the, the shields, kind of in warp range, and as soon as the seller got out, he warped in his alt, jumped into the ship, and took off. Uh, at the time, I couldn't really prove who uh, was the, the bad guy, so I actually ended up uh, reimbursing both of them to just get out of the mess. Uh, but it, it is things like that that's usually like the, the common thing. Uh, there has been a few uh, scam attempts of non-existing ships, which is pretty stupid, I would say. Uh, because the guy wanted to get paid before he showed the ship. <laughs> usually people want to see what they're buying. But usually it's small things like that, otherwise it's, it's pretty straightforward. The, um, you were tracking the spam from Jita, which you did mention during your presentation. Are you the person responsible for CCP finally banning the macro spammers recently? And if I, so, thank you very much. Well, I, I would say so. if I am, then I'm very grateful, but uh, I have no idea. May, maybe I have helped them point them in the direction of the problem, perhaps. But it's nothing that I've heard of, except I, I myself 
uh, pointed out several times in the quite obvious spam bots that has been around. But I'm also like very thankful for uh, CCP actually starting to move on spam bots because they kind of ruin uh, a major part of this game, in my opinion. Quick, well, did you want to talk to that? No, not your area. You don't know where, how to kick off. Can't you make something up? <laughs> <laughs> it's all me, yeah, you heard it here. More questions for Kruber. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a situation where PL had kicked out, I think, I'm pretty sure it was Atlas. Um, we'd, PL had paid you, my, or you're a third party um, on the retreat terms. Just wondering if you could give us the backstory on that, because I remember that they ended up backstabbing us, but we didn't get any money out of it. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't get any money out of it. Uh, I decided to withdraw from the deal, actually, because neither side uh, were being honest. And this was a pretty, pretty big deal, and it involved a lot of money, uh, and it was to switch soft between, uh, between, between the two parties. Something that is always very tricky, and I try to cover myself with uh, making sure that I have as much information as possible uh, when doing that sort of trades. Uh, and in this case, it ended up with, uh, pretty much it was uh, uh, an app agreement, but one side still kept on shooting towers of the other side, which was something that uh, wasn't wasn't allowed. Well, uh, well, one side said, or well, the, the aggressors said we had the right to shoot the towers because they are not moving out fast enough, things like that. Uh, so, so the whole deal kind of just it went south, and I wasn't able to verify, and neither party actually wanted to like help out because I, I told like, okay, yeah. We'll let this, these towers that you just destroyed, we'll let that slip from the deal if you tell like your, uh, your corp mates and everything to back off. You don't shoot any more towers, and then still more towers went down. So uh, that's, uh, I realized that I wouldn't be able to, to, to help out with that, so I can just withdrew. I didn't take the money, though they got their money back. Well, that's pretty much an unpopular view on the game, not part of the It's you! <laughs> You've been flying around since the beginning. What's your favorite ship to kick back in? Uh, I would say like 99% of the time I'm flying a Tengu. Oh, yeah. oh, I know, but oh, that, it, it, it's super fitted for just flying fast, flying stealthy, and not getting caught by bubbles. Oh. Um, we did actually do a bit of a radio show a couple of nights ago, and I had uh, Kruber and Fozzie on the show. It was fantastic. And there was a question came up then, actually, that uh, you're a bit of a ship collector. Yes. He likes to collect ships. You, every ship in the game, buy a couple of really exotic ones? Uh, yeah, well, I have, uh, well, most of them, uh, uh, pretty much all of the Alliance tournament ships. I don't have the, the very early special edition ships that are only one of. Uh, I have all the super caps and all the stupid characters yeah. that goes along with it. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, every, every, all the Titans, one Eve each, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. This is, yeah. takes lots of ships. Um, the other thing is sort of... Uh, Randomly, he was fam he famous for his, his love of mining, of course. We saw the uh, Veld Nort, um, the Tat as well. Veld, Veld Spa for the win, babies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any more questions at this point? We're going a little bit over time. Oh, Kips. Um, you mentioned that, uh, I don't know, even know if you're um, able to, to tell us, but you mentioned your, your cheapest and most expensive transactions. What were they? The five million and the two trillion. What on earth in the game is worth that much? Well, five million—that's a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> uh, and the two trillions uh, involves uh, a few ships and uh, some, well, a few ships, uh, a lot of ships actually. It, it's like it was a deal of a whole package of super caps. But 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 it was like well, we went prepayment and then sort of like payment on delivery kind of insurance. Well, we had a full financing deal going. Did they oh, literally no. just warp a fleet of super caps in and have a fleet of people to jump in? Uh, no, like I said, th this was more uh, an order of like we we want to order uh, like twenty titans from you guys, so and we want to make sure that you actually deliver them. So we're gonna pay you well two two trillion in advance, and then as each one got delivered, it's kind of like just chop off that sum. So it, w it wasn't super exotic, but. <laughs> One, nice one last question. Um, you say you've got a love of Veldspar. Do you currently have a tally of how much Veldspar you have? 
Yeah, it, it's in the billions. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did post a screenshot uh, when I passed uh, 1 billion uh, and the funny thing with uh, putting a 1 billion stack of else or, or probably a, a 1 billion stack of anything in game is that uh, well, you know it turns like K and M and B and the, the screenshot that I posted it said 1B on, on the wells per stack and someone came in like oh that's a that's a fake because it says 18 because the B looks so much like an 8 <laughs> <It's> like, <yeah. laughs> One bill. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, I think uh, that's us done for the morning. We'll have to cut away Sion's presentation. On the program, it was scheduled for before lunch. Hopefully, that's all right by you, good sir, um, because we have run over time. Um, but I'd like just one another round of applause for Kriba. Yeah. All the way from Sweden, no less. All the way on, on his own time, on his own uh, efforts. So it's uh, brilliant to have a guest of his... Uh, statue in the game, so thank you.